is it. Here we go. Opening morning. Wakey, wakey, Ethan. <laughs> yeah, he's stern. You can see the coffin tent moving a little bit. Have a good day. Ah. Yo. Not fully. That's about right for 4.56 yeah, in the morning. Not fully awake. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Hey. <laughs> One syllable words. <laughs> are actually slightly ahead of schedule. <laughs> so far so good. You only get so many opening mornings in your life. I'm thankful for every one of them. Just the excitement around it too. You know, the night before everybody's texting you good luck, let me know how you do. I'll be excited to be texting with people throughout the day and seeing if they're having any luck. Shane Simpson's hunting close by. Hopefully somebody's gonna knock one down. Yeah, maybe we can at least help somebody pack one out today. That would be fun. It doesn't matter if it's me or whoever it is, it's just fun when somebody has success and you get to share in that. So, off we go. This is a sweet spot. I noticed this on a map like this. It's just a little saddle right here. And is there like crop fields up that way that would be coming out off of or what? Yeah, there's all those crop fields that okay. we we glass. There's alfalfa, corn, and beans all up there. I mean, they could possibly come off of the high ridge too and come down here. But I figured more than anything, they would just be coming through this saddle. But the wind that we had this morning at South, it didn't work for any of the oak islands and marshes that we've been scouting on the other piece. So we decided to come to this spot. Then this afternoon, it's supposed to switch around to west northwest, and we'll be able to hunt those oaks that uh, that I'd scouted back in August and that we had glassed the other day. Got set up on time. I mean, we're hunting. Right. <laughs> could be worse. <laughs> Shooting a doe comes by. We got some broadhead testing. I mean, if it's over the shoulder, like at 10 yards yeah. right here, yeah, probably better. Sitting there pretty as can be. I just checked my phone and our buddy Shane Simpson shot a good one this morning, just a moment ago. Killed. So you guys are gonna have to go check that out. Yeah. So probably have it up around the time we do, if not before. Yeah, that's gonna be sweet. Mm -hmm. All right, it has been a slow morning here. We have not seen a deer. We got skunked. So it's kind of like a kill or probably don't see anything yeah. at the spot too. Yeah, that's exactly right. This wasn't a, an area I expected to see a lot of deer, but if they came through here, they were gonna be within bow range. We got a hold of Ethan. He's actually gonna go help Shane. We're fired up for him. Can't wait to see a picture of it. So we're gonna get down and start making our way back. Are you gonna show him how a nervous guy gets out of the tree? <laughs> how are the heights for you this morning? Oh. First one of the years, always a little bit nerve-wracking nerve for me, but you know, <laughs> I'm tied in two different times, just gotta tell myself, so. Literally nothing bad could really happen, you know, I could maybe just slam up against the tree a little bit, but that's it. Our platforms are like 11 feet off the ground. I, guess <laughs> I can almost hand you my bow. And it gets pretty steep on the backside here, right? <laughs> Falls off another foot. <laughs> All right, it's September 1st, about nine o'clock in the morning. Greg and Jake are out hunting. I was doing some scouting down here. I was on my way back and Greg gave me a call and said that one of our good friends, Shane Simpson, who's also out here hunting, had a deer down. So I'm gonna go help him drag it out, maybe record a little video, um, see what he has down and just help him out, so. Well, I was supposed to be there by now, but it's about 45 minutes later and turns out Shane accidentally sent the wrong pen, so. I think we're on the right track. We'll be there in a little bit. We're gonna help Shane get his deer out. I finally found his truck about an hour after he called me. I guess I, I wore the perfect shirt today. Yeah, you did wear the perfect shirt. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, this was this was my number one spot. Uh, cyber scouting and just because of the way it pinches down there's some water features here that I thought would force them to come through here and so I came here yesterday and scouted this and jumped a couple of deer and saw all the trails right here so um, found another spot for yesterday afternoon that I thought would be a good afternoon sit but I wanted to get in here this morning and I got situated in the tree and I, I should have took more time to analyze the tree because I had difficulty getting up in it and getting settled it was well into light when I finally got settled and about 10 minutes later, I looked over my shoulder, I heard something, there was a small buck, and 
And I was, uh, I pulled the camera off the tree arm to get some footage of him. He was directly behind me and, and out steps two more uh, deer. And it was, this was one of them. And then there was one a little bit bigger than this. But he turned to leave and this one was standing broadside. And I was like, well, I better, I better take a shot and put this camera down. So I hung my camera on the, on the tree limb. I had my 360 camera going, so it probably got footage of it. But um, it was about a 25 yard shot. Hit him high, went down through the spine into the chest cavity, so, and he dropped right there where he was at. But it's, it's too quick of a hunt here in Nebraska. All the <laughs> cyber scouting I, that I did, I mean, weeks and weeks of cyber scouting, and one day of scouting and in the stand for 20 or 30 minutes and uh -huh. kill a, a, a nice deer. That's awesome. Yeah, there's, there's two lanes right here, one here and one there, and I was torn between the two. And that and there just seemed like I had more shot opportunities because I could almost shoot to that lane there, shoot on the other side where I thought there was some good bedding and then catch the backside. And I'm glad I did because they came right here on the backside of this and they, I think they were gonna skirt around and follow this drainage here. I should have been in that tree right there. <laughs> but they came yeah, right around the corner here. The biggest one stopped and turned and went that way. And the smaller one was messing with this. And then this one here walked over here. I think it was right about here somewhere. And you see the little green bushy limb right here. I was in that fork tree behind it, shooting right over top of it. Okay. And uh, he looked like he was gonna go right through here. Well, just from the satellite images, because I know there's, there's a fence around this uh, 40 acres or whatever, it keeps the cattle out. And so in this area with all the cows, it's hard to pick out what's deer trails and not from satellite images. But I could see coming right through a little gap here. There's, you know, there's water behind us. There's water right over here and there's water there and there's a gap there and you could see the deer trails on the satellite images and I'm like, that's a, a, just a nice pinch point right there. It's gonna bring them right through here. And at the very least I'll see deer and that'll make the hunt more enjoyable. Right. You, know? you know, this was my first, this was my number one spot. I mentioned it in my own videos several times that this was my number one spot. I thought that I'd have a good chance of seeing some deer here. Yeah, how are you going to fit them in there? I'm going to just toss them on top of that tote right there. <laughs> or we are. I don't think I can do it by myself. Alright, let's throw it in there. Shove them over. Hey, buddy. Can you ride shotgun? This is the arrow I'm hunting with this year. It's a 250 spine Sirius Vulcan. And that's a two blade single bevel. I think Grizzly is the name of the company. 200 grains, total air weight 660. I wanted to shave a little weight off. I, I thought I was getting a little overboard, but it was shooting good for me. So I figured what the heck, it's, uh, it's gonna give it a lot of momentum to get through those bones if you happen to hit that. And as it turned out this morning, that's exactly what I did. Wasn't aiming for it, but that's what these are, what was Ranch Ferry calling Plan B arrows? Yep. That was Plan B this morning. Ooh. See that AC fan? That's how I know it's my vehicle. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> nice shirt. Yeah, I, I put it on last night and said I got a, uh, I got to put on a different shirt so everybody thinks I took a shower last night. <laughs> and I saw this in my toe and I said, I got to put that on. That's my lucky shirt. Mm -hmm. It was well in the shooting light when I finally got settled in. Yeah. The tree was all crooked and it was just yeah. a mess. And I think I'd been sitting there about five minutes or so just getting situated. And I heard it sound like a twig snap or something. I looked over my shoulder and there was a little buck there. And he went by the little buck and he stopped broadside about 25 yards. And, I'm, and I was getting footage of him all and I was like, I need to be shooting a deer. <laughs> but it went into his chest cavity. It went through the spine, spinal column, and into the chest cavity. But I, I found the arrow inside him when I was cleaning. I hit my finger on the broadhead. Oh, really? <laughs> what broadheads are you shooting? It's a Grizzly 200 grain. Okay. Two blade single bevel. Okay. So it's, it's really sharp. I've spent hours getting them all sharpened up. <laughs> I bought one of those kits from uh, that Ranch Ferry yeah, had yeah. on this uh, yep. video y'all did with them. And I was just going through all the grits, and I was like, man, that thing's like a mirror. <laughs> it was nice. Yes, yes, sir. We were wondering if it was velvet or not. I like how you got them stuffed right in the back. <laughs> now I get to bring out the recurve. Really cool. That's a nice box. I'd settle for this one. 
You know how I think they, they haven't had any pressure on them yet. Mm -hmm. And so they're a little bit later getting to bed. Yeah. And yeah. these were, like I said, they were nibbling stuff. So I think they were kind of feeding their way back. Yeah. Yeah, first day here, first time ever being here. Yeah, my girlfriend, I called her this morning. She's like, so you coming home now for a few days? And I'm like, no, I'm going straight to North Dakota. I'm... So I told my wife that you'd shot a deer, and she said, well, what's wrong with you? Do better. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised those deer do the same exact thing. Yeah. I mean, that, that pinch point is one of those dream spots that as long as it doesn't get interfered with a lot of other hunters, mm -hmm. I think they'll consistently go through those gaps mm -hmm. coming off those hills. And, and the bedding is tremendous down in there, I think. Like, well, I'll just cover my mouth and I was talking to them. That way they can't read my lips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to do the, the sensor beep and the blur, blur of the yeah. face. Mm -hmm. Good one. Definitely want to keep that one under wraps. The whole piece of public. <laughs> <laughs> I did the, the easy way out of editing. Just yeah. <laughs> one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, what's it weigh? 150 field dress. That's not bad. So about a 175. 180. Yeah, 180. Yeah. 180 All right, so we got a little bit of downtime today. Figured I'd go through bow setup, arrow setup, broadheads, and I've got some of the old broadheads that I've used to shoot back in the day over the course of 25 years of bow hunting. So I'll talk a little bit about where I've been, what I'm shooting now, but starting with the bow. Uh, this year I'm shooting the Bear Status, and that's their flagship bow for this year. And I really I hadn't planned on shooting it. I shot the Kuma last year, really liked that. But they had sent us a couple of different bows to try out and pulled this one back and absolutely loved how solid the back wall was. In three shots, we had it shooting bullet holes. So that was nice. The bow tuned super easy. And uh, for the accessories, I've got a, a Trophy Ridge hot wire sight. That's a three pin sight, and that's perfect for us. Most of the guys are, are running with this sight on their bows and I just like the fact that it's got three pins. The bottom pin is adjustable which is nice so you can drop it down to shoot farther distances. But for hunting whitetails in the Midwest I like a pin housing that's not cluttered with a bunch of pins. You know three is perfect. You know all the years that I've bow hunted I haven't shot a whitetail over 40 yards. In fact I probably can count on one hand maybe maybe two maybe six or seven deer that I've shot between 30 and 40 yards. As far as the rest I've got the trophy ridge sync md i like that that tab on the bottom of it you can just reach up with your thumb and pop that up and then for the quiver i've got the uh, trophy ridge hex light quiver it's a five arrow it's got the lights on it There's, those are bright enough if you, that's all you wanted to use walking in you could just be carrying your bow and and see what's in front of your feet then there's light in the quiver itself that allows you to see as you're pulling your broadhead out or putting it back in at the end of the day Okay, for my arrow setup, and if you've been watching the show at all, or really been watching any YouTube hunting videos at all, you've probably heard some talk about heavy arrows, high FOC, cut on contact broadheads. It's a uh, popular topic nowadays, and it's certainly some been something that we've been talking about a lot and been experimenting with the past couple of years. So when I first started bow hunting about 25 years ago, aluminum arrows and uh, fixed blade broadheads were commonplace. That's what was popular at the time. Here's a, uh, a Thunderhead for an example. Uh, what else do we have? I used to shoot wasp broadheads that have some old wasp blades in here, uh, muzzies as well. So over the course of 10 to 12 years, I went from shooting aluminum arrows and, and fixed blade broadheads to shooting carbon arrows and various types of these mechanical broadheads. Started out with some of the, the smaller versions like a, uh, the steel head here, inch and a quarter. And with that setup, I was still passing through most of the deer I shot. But as I started to shoot these larger cutting diameter expandables, um, inch and a half, inch and three quarter, up to two inches, so with the lighter setups, the lightweight carbon arrows and these uh, bigger cutting diameter expandable broadheads, I wasn't passing through deer like I was with the other setups. And it was still killing the deer, still able to recover them. But that was uh, you know, problematic when you're not passing through, completely passing through a deer on a close range shot, broadside shot, when, when you're just hitting you know, ribs, if anything, just passing through the chest cavity. So also I'll say that uh, you know, one of the things that we noticed is that some of the materials uh, on these broadheads just don't hold up. Like here's a you know a broadhead that I shot that hit the back edge of a, a scapula on a on a buck and it bent the tip over. I'm not talking like a full shoulder blade hit, like just barely caught the back edge of it. Bent the tip over and dulled the blade so bad that I couldn't even possibly cut myself if I tried right now. And I sharpened them out of the package too to get them as you know sharp as I could, and it just completely dulled that broadhead. 
So that, you know, the materials um, coupled with the, the lack of penetration is why, you know, collectively as a group and personally, we've shifted back to shooting cut on contact broadheads or shooting fixed blade, in this case, cut on contact and going with the heavier arrow setup. And uh, for this year, uh, I'm shooting a day six arrow. It's a 300 spine. Uh, I've got a hundred grain stainless steel insert and then a iron wheel S125 broadhead. And this is a premium broadhead. These are super, super high quality broadheads. You can get them sharp, they stay sharp, and also has these stout bleeder blades on it. And also you can get the custom engraving on there. So that's really sweet. Like I said, really excited about shooting these heads this year. Actually just real excited about this entire setup. So yeah, that's it. Excited to put it to use this fall. Take three. There we go, nice and easy. Just all excited because we got a deer hanging on the meat pole. The meat oak. The meat oak. And a really cool thing is I'd been talking with Shane for the past couple weeks and he told me what his plan was coming into this hunt. You know, like he executed it perfectly. Yeah. Now we got to do the same thing. That's right. There's a muley buck bedded under that rock shelf right there. Too far to shoot across, but if we could have got around him somehow, I mean, it might have been a bit of a long shot, but that was cool. That would have been fun to mm -hmm. try to make a move on him. I guess if we were looking into every little shaded spot, you'd just never get to your destination. Yeah, I mean, that was that would be a tough place to just, I mean, you'd have to really be creeping over this top here, because yeah. we literally just came over the top. 20 yards from where we last stopped. Yeah, and actually I'm looking ahead at some of these yeah. uh, sumac patches because I've seen deer browsing and, and bedded around those. So that's actually where my attention was. And then Jake spotted that deer right there. Yeah, watching the access path. He's got a heck of a view down into the canyon too. <laughs> Dang it. On to the next one. A whole bunch of bats in here. I've noticed that they really like to bed in this switchgrass. There's not a lot of it, but when there is, there's almost always deer beds in it. The hope is just being up a little bit higher in elevation will get us a steadier wind. Like down in there was a little swirl. It's going to stay on this edge up here. Yeah. Ideally, it'd be straight north, but it's supposed to shift northwest throughout the evening, so it's supposed to, it should get better and better. Yeah, it kind of might, might be what we need to give him the confidence to move this way, too. I mean, it would be just off make this one work we wouldn't have to get very high. We've got some back cover with this oak behind it here. Five twenty-two. So three miles and three hours later <laughs> we are finally set up. That trail is lit. That trail. That trail's beat down through this little island of oaks here marsh that we keep talking about is about 70 yards away. I mean, what better draw for a, you know, a buck to get up out of his bed, come up onto this little island, make a rub, scrape, and then feed on acorns and then move on out to the, the ag fields throughout the evening. We've had good hunts here in the past. Hopefully that will continue tonight. But I'm guessing if we shoot one, we're not getting out here until at least two o'clock in the morning. We got the manpower. No better time to do it than right now. <laughs> So you're saying they'll shoot a doe even? <laughs> yeah, can you imagine <laughs> calling them and asking for help to, to take a doe yeah, out? Yeah, nice buck. <laughs> oh man. It's right at 7.30. Been on stand for two hours now and haven't seen any deer. Yesterday morning we were back up on a knob not far from here, watching down into this bottom. We know there's deer in the area, but I think it's a little bit early for the acorn drop. We've seen maybe a few on the ground, but probably nothing that's a major attraction at this point. So I think in a week to two weeks, this spot is probably gonna be a lot better. Still a chance we get something to come up here. I mean, this trail in front of us here, it's beat down. We'll see if anything comes through tonight. If not, it's gonna be a pretty slow first day in Nebraska we saw we got a glimpse of one deer this morning I guess we saw a mule deer on the way in this afternoon but good thing we got Shane around providing content for THP <laughs> get him on the payroll yeah we got a lot of money to go around <laughs>
not get skunked. Just kind of hanging out there. Has been for about the past five minutes. Acting like maybe there was another deer out in the marsh that he could see. He kept looking out there and then went to make a move. We're working the overhanging branch. So we're on the board. <laughs> we saw a bug. Get back after it tomorrow. Boys. Congrats. Wow, that's a, look at all the points. That's awesome, man. <laughs>